Hello, this is Bibi Cameron and I like collecting sewing machines and give them a new life after being in storage for a long period. Then I clean them and I repair them. In this video, I'm showing tips and essential information you need to know to have a happy experience with these kind of machines. I'm going to start showing you the sewing machine case. Uh, this is made out of plastic and these pins here are to easily attach the sewing machine on. These are the original accessories for this machine. They have been cleaned to the perfection as the other parts of the machine. And this is the sewing machine manual. Behind the sewing machine you will find two holes, like this one here, to attach the plastic pins of the sewing machine case. These parts go there. I'm going to show you my way to put the machine on its base. As the machine is a bit heavy, I found this way easy. I just turn the machine like this, facing up, and I lift it a bit to be able to insert the case pins on those holes. This one here is a bit tight. It doesn't want to, to go in. So I just help myself and I bring the machine towards me and then I push the machine like I'm showing here so the plastic pin will finally go in place. I previously removed these screws to be able to clean the machine. So now I'm going to put them back in place and I will fit them to the machine. This is very, very easy. And there is another two holes here and here. And there is where I'm going to put the screw. And we are done. Now let me show you this part here. This is the bobbin case and you need to release this latch here to remove it. I'm just taking the opportunity to show you this here because later it will be a little bit difficult to see from above. Another thing I want to tell you is you might need to keep this part clean for a happy sewing. This is essential. Have to be free of threads, free of dirtiness or even oil. You can find the child instruction of how to clean this in the manual. So keep the rest of your sewing machine clean as well in oil. I have cleaned this machine as much as possible and I apply oil to any mobile or rotatory part. You see here, this machine is absolutely clean. And now I want to explain a little bit about needle plates. Needle plates are easy to remove from the machine. You don't need to unscrew them. I have in my hand a straight stitch needle plate. You see this little hole here? It's for the needle to go through. And now I'm grabbing a zigzag needle plate. The difference is the hole size or the space here. In this plate is wider as the needle go in zigzag. I will try to show you a little bit better and the sewing machine needle will go in this little hole just like that so if you are using this needle play you only can work with a straight stitch if you use a zigzag stitch you will break the needle you can use a zigzag needle plate for both for a straight and zigzag as the overture here is bigger really hope you can understand me i'm not english speaker so i'm trying my best but anyway, I bought this machine for parts. The woman who sold it to me, it was the unique owner since she was a teenager. And she told me that the machine was faulty. But even though I decided buying the sewing machine because I want, I really want this model in my collection. And when I got home, I just realized that the machine was in perfect condition, but only needs to be clean and it needs a new needle plate. If you see here, I'm trying to make a close up so you can see here this needle plate was broken. I tried to rectify this piece so I can sew using it, but it's broken. 
it has a dent so before the needle didn't go down. So I just got a brand new zigzag needle plane online and I will try it on now. It's just to show you that you can get spare parts in very very good prices online. This is not impossible. So I'm just opening the package here and it looks pretty good, pretty much the same. The seller sent me a zigzag needle plate and they look the same size, the same shape, the same orientation. They only have a small difference that in my opinion won't affect the performance of the sewing machine. I don't know if you can see these channels here and here. This this one do not have them in the exact way. So now I'm going to try it. And as you can see, it sits perfectly in place. A silly tip here for you. If the needle plate is not fitting properly, just like you see here, you're struggling to put it in place. Try to do this. Just grab a screwdriver and unscrew a little bit this screw here and put it in place. This needle plate have to go flat and straight. And when you close the slide plate, that should attach perfectly. Then tie this screw here back. Another silly tip here is that I used to connect the power cord first to the machine and then to the power supply. And I do this with my old sewing machines or my vintage sewing machines and also with the modern sewing machines and any electric appliance. So I do that and I'm safe. I think you will be safe if you do it in the opposite way. So it's just an advice or a tip. This is the pedal. The pedal in this machine is a little bit rusty, but it works perfectly. It's smooth and it controls the speed of the machine. Now I'm going ahead and I'm going to show you how I put thread in the metallic bobbin. You will find instructions in the manual, but I also will show you here. Okay, so insert the thread spool in one of the spool pins behind the machine. Now place a bobbin on the bobbin winder stud. Take the thread and pass it through this part here. Wind the thread several times around the bobbin, like I'm doing here, and press the winder finger back to set the bobbin in place. The bobbin winder fingers move backwards and forwards and you need to put it backwards when winding the bobbin. Then press the pedal to start winding the bobbin. But before, and I almost forget, something very important is turn the balance wheel towards you so the needle here won't move. And in some mechanisms or in some machines, they will cause the bobbin winder to operate. In this machine, it will work if you don't do that but I recommend to do this just to protect any work you have in your machine at that moment or even if you have the needle plate like I'm having here to avoid breaking the needle or damaging parts. So I don't want the needle moving while I'm winding the bobbin. Press a little bit the pedal and do this slowly. You can go faster when you already have a lot of practice. I want to show you something now. I tie this and the machine is going to move. And I don't want that, okay? This machine is not noisy. It's just amazing because you think that vintage is noisy, but this machine is very, very smooth, not noisy, and it's really, really pleasant to work with. So I just released this spool and I'm ready to thread this uh, in the bobbin case. I just insert the bobbin and I guide the thread into the slot in the edge of the bobbin case and I pull it through the right under the tension spring 
and into its delivery eye. The thread needs to move easily here, has shown. It doesn't have to be trapped there. To put the bobbin case in place, you need to move the slide plate and insert it in this part here. I hope you can see it. It's like a metallic pin there. So what you have to do here is release the latch in the bobbin case. This is the latch. Release it and press the bobbin back until the latch catches and hold the bobbin case in proper position. This is very important, very, very important. If you want to sew with these sewing machines, you need to put this in place. You see there, in the circle, that little part has to be there, it match perfectly there, and that's where it has to go. And it has to be solid there, cannot be moving. Now I'm going to thread the rest of the sewing machine. The first thing I'm going to tell you is make sure the presser foot is up, always. This cannot be down, it has to be up, okay? Not down, up. Now go to the upper thread part and follow the threading guide as I'm showing here. Now go down and you will find the upper thread tension dial. Okay, there's a space there, and there is two discs here. And the thread needs to go in the middle of these two discs here, as I'm showing here. When you do that, you see this here? You need to pull this thread somehow. Pull it up, go there. And this is how the thread has to go in that part of your vintage sewing machine. It's key, it's important. The machine won't work fine if you do not do this. So I'm going to repeat here. So you can see, I hope you can see clearly, and then you keep threading the machine. I just go up again, and I'm going to pass the thread through the hole in the thread guard bar. According to my manual, oh, this thread just go out of place, so I just put it in place again. Very important to have the thread in place. In the manual, it shows this thread go out of that um, hook there so now I'm going to keep going and I'm going to pass the thread to every hook down in the next to the needle just like I'm showing here there is a couple of hooks there I hope you can see that and this needle goes not some some needles go facing to the front but this one goes to the side so I'm going to thread the needle just like I'm showing here. And now I'm ready to show you how this machine works. And the first thing I'm going to do is to adapt a needle plate. I'm going to adapt the spray stitch needle plate just to show you here how the needle go into that hole with such precision that you will be able to make a perfect straight stitch. You can regulate here the width of the stitch and here the length of the stitch and the direction of fit. To make a straight stitch, I need to set this in zero and with this screw here, the name is with stoppers, I need to make sure that they are attached in such a way that this part cannot move. It has to be in zero. And I'm setting the length of the stitch in four. Then I put down the presser foot, just like that. 
and I turn the balance wheel towards me so I get the thread from the bobbin up. This is how I set the machine to start sewing. And now I'm going to adjust the tension. I remember that was my mom day when she was sewing and to be honest there is no mystery. The thinner the fabric is, the highest the tension. So one is the tightest tension you can get in this machine. For light cotton I just set the machine in four. So I'm going to sew and I'll show you how this works. And I'm going to change the feet direction here. Going to I was in four forward and now I'm going in reverse so I can back stitch. I change the feet direction again to forward and I keep sewing. I made something wrong when I was back stitching here, so I got a little bit of extra thread there, and that's because I'm paying more attention to the camera position, moving the camera from here to there, than to my sewing. So that little mistake in sewing wasn't the machine's fault, it was my mistake, and as I always say, it's not the machine, it's you. We need to know how to operate these machines, being a vintage sewing machine, or a modern computerized super modern sewing machine, you need to know how to use them or you will struggle. But once you know how to do it, that would be a very pleasant experience. This machine makes a very beautiful stress stitch. I know you cannot see it properly in this cotton fabric, you cannot see it, but it's pretty nice and it's very strong. But perhaps you will see it better if I use denim. So I'm using a little piece of denim here and I'm folding it in one, two, three, four, four parts, four times, sorry, and I'm going to make a straight stitch. I'm going to adjust the tension to seven or eight. This is a thick fabric so I need to reduce the tension. And then I just start sewing. So it easily sew four layers of denim or maybe more, but in this case are four and if you see the stitch a little bit better, you will see how tight and how nice it is. This is a very short uh, stitch, I think I set the machine in three or two, but if I, I can make long stitches, I will show you that. In this video don't worry if you have this machine you better take it out clean it oil it and put it to work because it's a monster i'm going to change the needle plate to a zigzag because i'm going to make a zigzag stitch here and i'm going to show you how the zigzag stitch looks as i said before with the zigzag needle plate on you will be able also to sew stray stitches and six sad stitches, no problem. I haven't changed the presser foot here or the, the foot, but that's something super easy. Maybe I can show you that in the next video. Uh, but here, let's focus in, in the sewing, in some basics. So now I'm going to make a zigzag stitch and I need to reduce the tension even more. So I just set the tension in seven and now I'm going to adjust the width of the stitch that for a big or white zigzag is five or four and I'm going to also adjust the length of the stitch and you can select from one to four. One is the shorter one and four is the larger one. So here we have a perfect tie 
zigzag stitch. Now I'm going to do the same with leather. It's just to show you that the quality of the fabric or the thickness of the fabric or the surface, if it's smooth or not, doesn't make any difference. The machine is very strong and is capable to sew from thin cotton to leather. You can also get leather needles and you will have better results, but the results are quite nice with an average needle. Now I just want to finish showing you a very quick and quirky leather project and just want to show you that you can make anything with this sewing machine. There is so many people that think that vintage sewing machines are complex or difficult to use, but for goodness sake you can even learn how to fix it yourself uh, with a computerized sewing machine that would be impossible. I really struggle with those modern sewing machines. I have two uh, and I like them to light work, but for hard work, nothing like a vintage sewing machine. Um, this is just a quick demonstration. I sadly have to let go many of my sewing machines in my collection uh, because I'm short of the space and we are having another baby so I just want to make a quick video to remember them and to know how good they are how good they were to me and how good they can be for you so if you have one of these one in your attic or in storage in the garage there take it out give it a clean oil it read the manual in the manual is everything you need to know to use these machines properly and if you need some help i'm sure you will find piles of tutorials online there are many many other things you can make with this machine endless things to be honest but the time is precious but i think that this is a little help for you in case you are struggling with your sewing machine in this model i have some more models i will be uploading more videos and just to show you that these machines can even sew three layers of leather like butter. And in my opinion, all the vintage sewing machines operate in a pretty similar way. Some of them just are identical. There are difference in the design and the way you have to thread the machines or also threading the bobbin case. I have a few more and I'm going to make videos to show you how I do that uh, or how I use them. So keep an eye here in my channel and I will show you how to use vintage sewing machines to achieve pretty nice results when sewing. This is a, a small kitty. It's a small project, last minute project. I just made it to show you how I do it with the machine. It's not perfect, but it's just an example. And another thing, uh, just didn't want to let you go without showing you how to put oil in these machines. These machines has holes uh, in different parts of the, the body. So all you have to do is grab your oil bottle and just drop some oil in those holes just to keep your machine working properly. I'm not a fan of big sewing machine cases. I have put in the recycling center many of them and I regret to do it because this machine was storage for over 30 years in this case and that's why the machine is so in perfect condition. The machine is heavy, I cannot lift it with my hand, but I love it. It has also this uh, switch here to turn on and turn off the light. This is behind the machine and you can also open this part here just pulling out with your hand to get access to this part and to change the bulb in case that the bulb is not working anymore that's the bulb there and also to put oil in this part here feel free to put oil in this uh, rotatory parts or any movement part and your machine will be okay it won't cause any damage these bulbs are incredibly cheap 
on your local craft shop and they have a lot of light they provide a lot of light you see here i just turn up some lamps in my studio and then i turn all the lights and you can see the light how vibrant it is and now i'm going to turn it off and that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this video and it helps you and gives you a light how to use your vintage sewing machine thank you very much for watching and happy sewing bye